Uh, hello everyone and thank you for joining again today the Wolf College of Coffee uh, weekly vlog. Uh, my name is Peter Wolf, uh, and today I'm uh, just going to answer a few questions that we received over the last little bit. Uh, a lot of these questions on this session seem to be very roaster specific and so we'll do our best to sort of cover off some of those. Please keep the questions coming on in. We certainly enjoy uh, responding uh, back to them. Uh, we do, uh, we're hopefully uh, getting back to everyone as quick as we possibly can. But our first, uh, I guess, two questions uh, come from uh, Sammy. Uh, and Sammy's uh, looking to uh, connect um, an RTD probe. He also now has his fidget and is just wanting to know if there's any other stuff that he needs in making it all connect uh, with his software. Uh, so I guess the first thing for you, uh, Sammy, is to think about uh, in the RTD um, probe is to also make sure that it's um, a PT100 uh, is basically what we would be looking for. And this would be for your bean temperature probe. And this has, a, a vet, has only a maximum reading of up to about 250 degrees Celsius. Uh, I guess it really comes down to then you've got the fidget which is great or, or as we like to think of it as a USB converter and really what this fidget is doing is taking uh, the, the reading that it's taking from the probe and converting it in a way that the, uh, the software that you have loaded on the computer uh, can be sort of read and understood. I'm not sure what software that you're using but really realistically what you would need to be doing is making sure that you install all the latest drivers uh, onto, your, uh, onto your PC uh, for the, uh, the fidget. Uh, also making sure that uh, the, the software is updated, but going within the software settings and then looking at what COM port in particular that you've got it connected into, so what USB COM port uh, you've connected the fidget into and making those two assign and line up. Um, and then maybe looking at uh, uh, making some adjustments in terms of the board rate, you may need to, to move that around. Normally 9,600 would be about the appropriate sort of board rate. Um, and that should work. Remembering um, that if you are getting a negative reading and when, they, when you do get that sort of connection and it is a negative reading, you just need to take the two wires that are coming off the probe and basically flip them around the other way. So they just reverse the polarity and that should, should be a-okay. The second question that Sammy asks, he's got a brand new roaster, he's noticing he's got some, uh, some grime and some grease on the inside of the drum. Uh, this is kind of fairly fairly normal uh, when you get a brand new coffee roaster. Uh, so it will have some, you know, some, I guess, old welding, little bits of metal. It will have some grease on the inside of it. So the, the best way of removing it is to go and buy some old coffee and season the roaster. You want to do between three to five batches of coffee in this way. What I do is I take the coffee and I roast it uh, right up to the second crack. I want to really get lots of oil and uh, developing off that. And really my aim is to do two things, replace the, the grease that's inside the drum with really good oil that's coming off the coffee um, and put that on the drum, the drum uh, surface. Uh, the key thing that you have to be careful of is that you want really the coffee sitting in there between 15 to 25 minutes. I know this sounds like a long time, uh, but the key thing is that when you get the coffee up to sort of second crack and you've got that really nice dark oily sort of look about it, you need to turn the burner off and then let the, uh, let the coffee sort of sit in there for sort of like 10 minutes. Uh, or so, um, and that will help do that. Do that about four or five times, um, and that will really kind of help uh, help you uh, get a lot of the, I guess, the build up and grind that's sort of inside the roaster. Don't let that coffee go to waste. You can also use this opportunity to understand the potential of your roaster in terms of power, understand what the turning point time and temperatures are roughly looking like. You get to understand roughly where the temperature threshold uh, happens in terms of the Maillard phase, turning the coffee from obviously uh, green to white to yellow, so that yellowing phase. What temperature threshold does that normally come in? What uh, temperature are we getting first crack at? What temperature are we getting second crack at? So you have all of this valuable information you can be using to start building, um, I guess, um, performance profile of your particular roaster. The second thing I also do uh, like to do is also have the drum empty. I like to heat the drum up. I like to let it run, um, let it run to about 200 degrees, 210 degrees Celsius. I might let that run for sort of half an hour. I then turn the burner down. And what I want to do is sort of expand and contract the drum. Um, and this gives an opportunity for everything to sort of start settling in. Uh, it allows me the opportunities to see if I need to be making any sort of adjustments to the drum gap uh, in particular, because uh, that will be the one thing that you'll be uh, wanting to make sure that we're not too far away from the front plate or we are actually starting to get rubbing uh, on that. So they're the two things I would certainly be recommending for you, Sammy. 
So my next question is from Nick. Uh, and Nick uh, wants to know, he's got basically um, his, uh, I guess his front drum uh, bearing. He's got two bolts on the top and two bolts on the bottom. Um, and he wants to know how he can adjust it. Um, it you know, with a little, with, with the, the limited amount of information that I've got, um, you should have received a C-shaped spanner. You will have seen that we mentioned this in an earlier vlog uh, in our roaster maintenance kit. Uh, but you should have received a, a spanner that has a C-shape with a little notch in it. Uh, and what the drum should be sitting on is really a threaded uh, shaft. And this allows some adjustment to moving it along, uh, backwards and forwards along the shaft um, to give you that gap along the front plate. So you should be able to loosen those four bolts off the top be able to move the, um, the drum uh, with the spanner and you'll see when you look in by lifting up the door if the drum is moving forwards or backwards and then you would be you're looking for a gap of about two millimeters and this is when the drum is cold so you need to be doing this before it's heated so you need to be using a feeler gauge and when it's about two mil I'll be using that as a starting point it may need a slight more adjustment um, either side, but two mils generally about where you need to be starting. So it would be my recommendations for you, Nick, uh, and give that a go. My last question comes from Nicholas, and Nicholas uh, wants to know, would a faulty temperature probe uh, be causing uh, his roaster uh, burner to turn off mid-roast? Um, I guess there's two things that you need to think about in this aspect. The thing that really controls or regulates the gas in terms of a safety aspect on your coffee roaster is yes, the temperature probe, because that will be wired through to an, an over temperature setting. So there will be a, a setting somewhere for safety on that roaster, whether it's 250 degrees Celsius or 300 degrees Celsius. And that's really your high temperature cutout. And if you reach that, then what it will do is it'll shut the gas off um, automatically uh, as a safety preventative. So that will be the first thing is to see what temperature setting you have that as and also bear in mind is it a bean temperature probe or is it an air temperature probe because you will require higher elevated settings. For a bean temperature probe you may be looking at something around about the 240 to 250 degrees Celsius for the air temperature probe or, or an environmental temperature probe you may be looking at between 280 and 300 degrees uh, Celsius as being kind of those sort of upper limits for where you want to reach that safety margin where it cuts out. So I'd be checking that first. I would also be checking all of the connections on the way through um, just to make sure that they're all secure. And I guess looking at how old is the probe. Um, but I think where it also does lead me is to also then start looking at what is the air pressure switch. And one of the things that's required is that the, the coffee roaster must prove that there's always airflow running through the roaster and through the drum. And so there's an, a, a pressure switch that lives at the back of the roaster. Again, we have this on an earlier vlog uh, where we, we show the air pressure switch. Um, now, if for whatever reason you're making airflow adjustments throughout the course of the roast and you're noticing you know, the burner cutting off at that particular time because you're making an adjustment on the air, this could also be an indication that you're activating the air pressure switch so it's thinking that you know, there's a low, very low airflow running through the roaster and this is turning itself uh, off as it, as it would do. Uh, so then it will just require a small adjustment on the air pressure switch to increase uh, the, the, uh, the level of uh, the pressure uh, resistance on that to be able to offset that. It will require a bit of tinkering, but that would be the two things that I would be looking at uh, in terms of you know, the go-tos on that. Thank you everyone for your uh, questions. Uh, there's a few just based around the roasters, but the more detailed or pictures that you can provide us in terms of your questions really helps us, uh, you know, giving you some really kind of accurate feedback. Um, and uh, thanks for watching.